This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the new features in Premiere Pro and Audition, the 2014 release for the Creative Cloud. In this excerpt, I'll show you the new features inside Audition. There's a new add-on marketplace for Audition. We can import and export Dolby Digital and Dolby Digital Plus files. We can create custom channel configurations for audio clips. There's improved multi-track editing. We can minimize tracks so they stay minimized. One of my favorite keyboard shortcuts is that we can now cut all clips under the playhead because that's one that I like. And we can also reduce the trailing space at the end of the timeline. Let's take a look at Audition CC for a few minutes before we wrap up today. And let's open up a project. Recently, I've been working with the folks over at the Hallmark Channel. They're owned by Crown Media out of uh, Kansas City, and Hallmark is the cable channel that uh, probably a lot of you have seen. And they very graciously allowed me to use one of their promos for a program called Garage Sale Mystery. And this is an 11-channel audio mix that they use, which was typical for one of their promos. And let's just go to this marker here. We'll find markers and double-click. Okay, good. Now several things. First, let's assume that this mix is done. So I want to go output it. When I go to File, Export, Multi-Track Mix Down, Entire Session, which is going to be my entire promo, sound effects, music cues, narration, sound on track, everything, click on this. I have the ability to change the format from what I normally use in my podcast, which is a wave, to Dolby Digital. When Dolby Digital is selected and I click the Change button, this opens up, do I want to create a Dolby Digital Plus for Blu-ray or Dolby Digital? In this case, I'm going to do Dolby Digital, which is an AC3 file. In the past, I've always recommended leaving dialog normalization when you are creating digital files for DVDs using compressor or media encoder. Leave dialog normalization to negative 31, which turns it off. It means that no additional manipulation of the dialog is being done. But what dialog normalization actually does is it looks to have the loudness of your dialog match other commercially released DVDs so that it isn't too loud, it isn't too soft. Dialog normalization is normally a good thing, provided you know where to set the setting. And up until this version of Audition, we've never known how to set the setting. Now we do. Let me illustrate. This is a mix which I've created into three stems. I have a dialog stem containing all of my dialog, an effects stem containing all of my effects, and a music stem containing all of my music. They're then mixed together into the full mix, which is in the master. I've exported the dialog stem, and this is the dialog stem after it's been exported with all filters and all effects. Once I've got the finished dialog, and I just use this for, for setting levels purposes, I go up to the window menu and select Amplitude Statistics and I click scan. It quickly goes through, scans the entire audio file. It says the peak, which is what all of us video editors are used to watching because it's the loud point where the meters are bouncing. The loudest this gets is negative 3.62 dB. Perfectly okay level, well below zero. Clip samples means there's zero distortion. My levels are fine. The number you want to remember, however, is this one for loudness. It's negative 20.37. This is the average loudness level of your clip. With that set, now let's go back to our demo. And this time we'll go up to File, go down to Export, Multitrack Mix Down, Entire Session. Click on the codec settings and change the dialog normalization to negative 20. I set dialog normalization to match the average loudness. The rest of these settings are fine except for dynamic range. And notice dynamic range is set to film standard compression. The problem is this is not data compression. It's loudness compression. And my recommendation is turn it off. So I'm going to set this to none and set this to none. You don't want to have Dolby messing with your levels when you've already taken all the time you need to make your levels sound perfect. So under Configuration, set Dialog Normalization to equal the loudness as measured by Amplitude Statistics. Go to Dynamic Range and set both of these to None and click OK. Now when you export this, if you have 
Dolby Digital selected, it'll export an AC3 file. And if you have Dolby Digital Plus selected, it'll export an EC3 file. Because I don't want to take the time to export this, I'm going to click Cancel. The next thing that we can do is we can create a multi-channel audio clip. Go to File, New, Audio File. Normally we would create stereo or mono or surround, but I can select Custom. And in creating a custom clip, I can create, say, an 8-track clip where I have the left and right channel for the stereo mix, the left and right channel for, say, the dialogue stem, the left and right channel for, say, the effect stem, the left and right channel for, say, the music stem, and now I can send a single clip, which is called four, say, call it four stereo pairs. I can now send that four stereo pairs as a single clip to somewhere else. They can then open each one of the channels, and when you open it up, Let's just call this uh, final mix, sample rate of 48K, which is always the best choice for video. Click OK, and there are all of my tracks, and they can turn on or turn off the tracks they want, separate them out as they see fit. It's really, really nice to be able to put more than just simply two, one or two or six channels in a single audio clip. When you need more flexibility, you've got it here. Now, in this case, I'm going to delete this. Where'd it go? Do, 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 do. Final mix right there. Delete it. Changes? No. Thank you. Let's go back to the multi-track. We've had clip colors for a couple of versions. I know I had clip colors in CS6. We've been able to add track colors since the CC release. And if we right mouse click over here, we can change the track colors to any of these uh, presets that we've got. The cool thing is now on the right-hand side, we see a reflection of the track colors. And what's nice about it is, as I zoom in, notice how I'm making my tracks bigger, the actual stack of colors doesn't change. The way I have this outlined is, we'll just click our Fit to Window button, I've decided for myself, SOT, which is sound on track, it's going to be sort of a brown color. Narration, dark blue. Sound effects are green. Music is purple. Stems are yellow. I can now look at my entire mix and quickly see, ah, I want to be in effects. Well, that's what these colors over here. Click on the color, and I'll jump up to say, let's see my, my sound on tape, or click down here. I can jump down to see my, my uh, stems. Grab the edge of this and drag and I can now vertically scroll and see the color that I'm over which gives me reinforcement especially when I'm doing a large mix 15 20 30 tracks or more I can quickly get from one point to another by dragging this thumb vertically the same way that we can drag the global view horizontally to move inside Horizontally, I can move inside vertically. In fact, I can right mouse click and right mouse drag, and I will expand my tracks so I can see exactly what I'm dragging, right mouse click drag, or just right mouse click drag. I can see precisely a vertical display of my tracks or fit it all to window by clicking here. Another thing that we can do, let's say that I want to add a new track. Right mouse click on a track and say track, uh, add a stereo audio track. It randomizes the color. This is really useful because rather than have yourself confronted with a wall of green as you're looking at all of this, you can now start to use colors to organize your clips or just simply to provide some visual variety so you don't get lost. And it assigned an orange color to my track. It's also gone with high contrast colors. I'm going to delete that track and say delete the selected track. We set that as a preference file. Go to Preferences, Appearance, and this is all new. We can display high contrast clips and track backgrounds. This is the old way. It's okay, but not as great. This is the new way. The colors just pop off the page. We can show track color bars in multi-track. That's over here. And we can randomize the track colors. When that's checked and you create a new track, it randomizes the colors. A lot of stuff for displaying tracks. By the way, to move a track, you could grab this little thumb, drag the track up or down to change its position, should that help you in terms of getting stuff squared away. Oh, thinking of this, look at this. I've now zoomed in. I don't want to change my music. My music is fine as it is. I don't need to have it be as fat as all the rest of these clips. Select the track, go up to multi-track, 
and minimize the selected track. Keyboard shortcut is shift backslash and the track is now minimized. I can scale other tracks up or down and notice that my music doesn't change. My music is still minimized. Where'd it go? There it is. My music, there it is, right down there. I, as much as I scale, that minimized track stays the same. Again, select it, go back to multi-track, go to track. The shift backslash is a toggle. Now it's there. Shift backslash, shift backslash. Toggles between being minimized as small as possible, still audible, still part of your mix. It's just not taking a lot of space. I'm going to put my playhead at some arbitrary spot. Notice that no tracks are selected. Go up to the clip menu, split all clips under playhead. This I use in video all the time. Put the playhead on where I want to make a cut, and notice that at the position of the playhead, every clip on every track is cut. Again, go back to here, split all clips under playhead. I've now cut those clips as well. You could assign a keyboard shortcut to it. There is none assigned by default, but it's easy to add. Just go to the Edit menu, go down to Keyboard Shortcuts, and you can add as many keyboard shortcuts or the specific one for this effect as you want. This is not a new feature, but I've never talked about it before, and it's worth talking about. Notice that I've selected a time range. By selecting the Time Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut is T, click, hold, and drag, and I can select a range within a clip. I can change the range by grabbing the out or grabbing the in and dragging it as necessary. Notice that I've got this range selected on that track. Type Option T. It automatically trims the selected clip to the region that you selected with the Time Selection Tool. Command Z to undo this. So let's say that I just want to trim this music. Select the letter T, drag, select the music, Option T, and I've trimmed the top and the tail to fit. Command Z to undo that. And the letter G, as in George, the letter G gets rid of the in and the out. Finally, the trailing space at the end. The trailing space at the end used to be a very precise 10% linear calculation. Whatever the length was, it added 10% of gray area. This is good for dragging clips in and adding additional material. But when you had an hour-long program, that 10% was a pretty large chunk of territory. Now, Adobe is calculating it logarithmically, and you'll see that this space, while still here, is reduced so that you're not locked into that big 10% block, which becomes really difficult to work with because so much space in your timeline is occupied with dead space, which, when you click this fit everything into the window, doesn't get rid of a lot of the dead space. There's just so much cool stuff here inside Audition. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at new features inside Premiere Pro and Audition, both the Creative Cloud 2014 release. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store. Membership is a great value, especially if you need to stretch your training dollars. A membership in our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 700 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions.